Hello friends, welcome back to Learn and Ticket Tutorials. This is our fourth video in our Jenkins tutorial series in which I am going to show you how to manage jobs in Jenkins that includes creating jobs, building jobs, build history, disabling and enabling jobs and what happens when you create jobs on Jenkins. Links related to this tutorial series and documents will be mentioned in the description. You can make use of it. And these are the topics we are going to cover throughout this series. Also, we will add more topics in the future. Before getting to the topic, small request to those who are watching this video for the first time. We have already uploaded a lot of videos and tutorial series on Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes and other technologies. Please have a look. If you are interested in learning, then do subscribe now and click nearby bell icon for more interesting and useful videos. Let's get started. So this is our freshly installed uh, Jenkins console where we have a few set of jobs. As we have discussed in the previous sessions, so on Jenkins, if you want to perform any task like building, deploying or anything, you need to have a job for the specific task. So in order to do all these tasks, we need to perform few things like we need to create a job, we need to configure the job, we need to schedule the job and we need to monitor the job. So how do we create that? On the Jenkins console, there will be an option called new item on the left side panel. Just click on this. Here you have to give a meaningful name for your job. If you have application name, then specify the application name followed by what action it is. If you have a meaningful name, then that will be easy for you to manage your hundreds of jobs. Bus app build or deploy or create environment, something like that. This is just a name and you have a type of jobs, freestyle projects, pipeline, multi-configuration, multi-branch pipeline and many more. These are basic type of jobs. Still, you can have more that is based on the plugins you have installed. Generally, if you have a single task, then people will go for freestyle projects. If you have a multiple stages on your jobs, then you must go for some pipeline jobs. Either you can go for pipeline jobs or you can go for multi-branch pipeline, which means if you have a single pipeline, then this is the right option. If you have a repository where you have a multiple branches, then you should go for multi-branch pipeline. So pipeline job is nothing but there is a format called DSL, which is domain specific language. With these pipeline jobs, you can define your entire automation process in single code. This is an example of such pipeline code. It will start with pipeline with braces and you will have a different sections that will include global section, also the staging sections. On the staging section, we will add multiple stages like checkout, build, image build, image push and environment deployment. So this is how we will create multiple stages and this is what pipelines. So mostly we will go for freestyle project if you have a single task to be performed or if you have multiple stages and then you can go for pipeline type jobs. Let me go with freestyle for now and click on OK. So you have created a job. Now we need to configure the job. What need to be performed using this job? On this configuration, you will have certain tasks like you will have an option called general. You will have an option to manage your source code management. You will have an option for build triggers, build environment, build steps, post build. So every job will have these certain functions. If you click on general, you will have option to put some meaningful description and you will have further options to manage it. Something like do you want to discard old builds, which means this will remove old builds. If you are not sure about these options, then there will be a question mark on the right side. If you click on it, you will have a clear manual page. Okay. And you have more options. And sometime you will not see these options on your uh, freshly installed Jenkins. On that case, 
it would require to install plugins. For example, if you don't have this option called GitHub projects, then you have not installed that plugin. That's it. If you want this option, you have to install the plugin. And this option, this project is parameterized. This will help you to have a parameterized jobs and we have a separate section for this. We will cover these in the later section. So this is general. And if you scroll down, you have another section called source code management. In short, this is a SEM. Okay. None means it is not going to check out any code from your Git repository. If you have enabled this Git, then you have to provide your Git repository URL. It might be Git, Bitbucket, GitHub from anywhere. The point is you need to provide your code repository. And if you have any specific credentials, then yes, we have to specify the credential over here and it will not list you anything until you add your credential. And on this repository, which branch you want to check out to perform this task. And the third option is build trigger. Build trigger is nothing but how you are going to trigger this job. Are you going to manually run this job or you are going to scheduling for a particular time or you are going to trigger this build based on commits on your repository you have mentioned over source code management. So these are build triggers. So there are few options like trigger build remotes, which means from remote server using some script, you can hit this Jenkins console through which you can trigger this job or build after other projects or build. This job can be a downstream job, which means there should be a upstream job after that job has executed successfully then this job will be triggered. So this job will be considered as a downstream job. And this is periodically, which means you can use the cron time format to schedule your job. So every five minutes, this job will be triggered. It means this job will be running every day around 10 a.m. So these are a build triggers based on the job we are going to perform we need to select the right option to trigger this job based on your code repository commit or polling then you can have these kind of options mostly people will use this poll ACM here also you can schedule for every 30 minutes or every 5 minutes or every 1 hour if you have selected SEM then it will go to your code repository and will check for any new commits this job finds a new commit then this job will be triggered build environment which means how you are going to manage your job and the environment environment is not your development or QA environment this is something on this job related for example delete workspace before build start which means you can delete your current directory before this job starts. If you have a credential or something on a file, you can use this option and you can select the type and you can add timestamps to the console output and you can use build tools before running the job. You can assign the tools variables. And this is the main option build steps by creating this job. What you are going to perform if you click on it, you will have multiple options since these are newly installed Jenkins you have limited options execute windows patch command execute shell invoke and invoke gradle run with timeout and build status to pending here if I have execute shell this will create a temporary shell scripting file to perform the task for example here you can use all your commands in sequence like how you create shell scripting for example git check out some git repository and you can use docker build and you can deploy the image or you can perform some kubernetes deployment anything you perform on the command line interface that can be used over here but the problem is any command you use here that should be installed on the jenkins server if not 
you will get an error like command not font. Here you can add more number of steps. You can add more. So this will be like sequential steps. Based on your request, you can add multiple steps. Now finally, post build actions. Here, once the job is completed successfully or failed, what you are going to do? Are you going to trigger any other job as downstream jobs? Or you want to notify the developers or administrators? All these post build actions can be found over here. Email notifications, you want to build other projects, which means this job will be uh, upstream jobs of the other downstream jobs. All these options will be discussed in the later sections. We have uh, advanced topics in the future as well. Okay, let me quickly add one simple job. Um, I have a repository on my GitHub. So let me use that Git over here. If I specify this repo on this Git, the first action would be check out the code repository on your Jenkins workspace. Let me enter the repository URL. If you have a public repository, then we don't need to add any credential. If you have a private repository, then yes, we have to add a credential. Let me show you quickly. Click on this add and Jenkins. Here you need to specify the type of credential. Mostly it should be a global credential. Then kind. What type of uh, credential you are going to use? Is it a username and password? Is it a AWS secret key and access key? Or is it a secret file? We need to select over here. Let me go with username with password and scope. It should be a global or system. Here you can specify the username. Your GitHub credential over here. Let me use this. And if you enable this, this username will be, you know, in the hash code. And password. If you want to have a unique ID in the name of uh, the credential, yes, you can give it. ID is nothing but uh, you can have a meaningful name for this credential so that this particular credential can be used in other jobs as well. Okay. If you want to give any description, then obviously you can give it. Then add. Now, if you select the credential, you can see the newly created credential. Then select it. And which branch you want to build. For example, if you want to check out only the developed branch, then you have to specify over here. And I don't have uh, multiple branch. I have a branch called main master on that uh, repository. So I've used this. And on build trigger, I'm not going to schedule anything for now. We have a separate section. So I'm going to trigger it manually. So I don't select any options. I have selected delete workspace before build get starts. So what I'm going to do is simply ls star just to show you what is happening on the background. I don't want this execute shell. I'm going to delete it and I don't want any post build actions for now. So just click on apply and save. So we have created a job called bus app create environment. Let me go back to the main Jenkins. Here you can see the list of jobs. If you want to manage any jobs, click on it. Here it will show you the status, then number of changes. I don't have uh, any build for now. And this is the workspace, which means for every job, there will be a directory. It will be created under Jenkins workspace. I will show you in some time. You can wipe out the workspace and you can build now. If I click this option, the job will be triggered immediately. And if you want to manage your job, then you have to click on this option. If you click on configure again, you will have multiple option to configure it and you can delete the project. If you don't want this job, then you can delete this job. If you want to rename the job, then obviously you can rename it. And here it will show you the list of history of the bills. Let me quickly run this. Once you have clicked on, you will see the build history. So it has run only one time and it is successful. And if you want to see what has happened with this build history, just click on this. On this build number, it will show you multiple options like timestamp, how much time it has taken, when it has started, who has started this and what revision it has checked out and changes. If you have any changes, then it will show here console output. This will help you 
to troubleshoot or go through what has happened on the job. If you go through this, it started by user and it has running as system and it is running on this particular directory. I have I told you right for every job that will create a job directory with the name under workspace. If you go to your Jenkins on this path, you can see the job that has run. So it is creating a workspace directory and it has cleaned up because we have selected the option, you know, to delete the workspace before the jobs get created. So it is deleted. And since we have selected the SEM, it is using the credential GitHub bus app. These are Git checkout. After this is done, then this is the shell script we have used. This will create a temporary shell scripting for you and add all the commands you have entered inside the execute shell section. I have added only ls star listing all the files within that repository. If you have a repeated task, then you can always create these kind of jobs and put everything so that you can manage your repeated task using Jenkins. And if you want to delete this build, you can delete it. This will just delete the history, nothing else. If you want to change anything, then again, you can click on configure, then go to the respective section, which you want to change. For example, if you have any script, something to deploy or if you have a docker file if you have a docker file inside the repository then you can use docker build dot command right so everything you can perform through this execute shell and also if you want to integrate ansible then you can use ansible command also if you install the respective plugins then you don't need to use all these clis you can directly use the plugins options and that will be a form based where you can use all your information and we have the next section that will cover the plugin management where we will discuss about all plugins options okay now keep in mind that any command you are giving in this section that command should be available on the jenkins let me apply save and re-trigger the build again it is failed so click on the build history so we should go to console output and go through the logs so the first command it has run successfully it is listing all the files and the second command is showing the error docker not found this is what i was telling and if i want to disable this job then on this job management there is an option called disable project through which you can disable it so this job will not be triggered at any cost and if you want to enable it back, click on this enable. And if you want to delete the project, you can delete it. Only if you are familiar with all these options, then only you would be able to perform many automation tasks. Going forward, we are going to create a multi-environment CI/CD deployment that will consist various stages. And we are going to perform these multi-environment deployment in two ways. One is with upstream and downstream jobs and another one using pipeline. So you should be familiar with all these options. That's it for this session. Hope you have got an idea how to create and manage your Jenkins jobs. See you in the next video. Till then, keep practicing and have fun.